Okay, welcome to the 59th lecture. We have been discussing about the satellite with control moment gyros. So, in that context, we were deriving some equations. So, we will continue with that equation. So, if you remember, we wrote h total or this is the total angular momentum of the satellite, we broke into two portions. One is this satellite, which we have written by this b, and uh, inside there is a hollow, and in this hollow, the control moment gyro, which is located there, and we are showing like this. So, this part we have written as the h b, and the other part we have written as the h c m g, or here in this case, we have written it by h w. And we are assuming that the uh, this external frames are the internal and external frames they are not present. Okay, so the internal frame we showed like this. Okay, so both of these frames are not there. Only this part is there, or they are massless basically. So and because of that, we can ignore them. So, in that case we are just dealing with the wheel and uh, then we wrote this part as i body and uh, in the matrix notation if we write in terms of the uh, this inertia diadic. So, we can write it like this we are omega and the moreover there is one more assumption that if this is the satellite. So, and uh, Suppose this is the hollow, okay, and in this H O. So this is the hollow, and in this only you have the wheel located here. Okay. So the center of mass of the wheel and center of mass of the this body, they are matching. Okay. So the center of mass of the wheel. And the body coincide, and this is our mathematical processing. So uh, now this part we have written as I W will dot omega will. Okay, so this is the absolute angular velocity of the wheel absolute angular velocity of the wheel. Okay. Thereafter, we have started with getting h dot. So, we know that if the system is free from the external torque. Uh, okay. So, in that case we have to set it m to 0, but here in this case if we assume that the external torque is there. So, m will be equal to h dot and this we are doing with respect to the e frame, where e frame throughout our discourse we have just uh, used this for uh, inertial frame and a small e we have used for the body frame, body frame. So, we here we have two bodies, the first one is uh, the main satellite body, which you are showing it by hollow, and here your E1, E2, and E3 are located, and simultaneously in the same place, you can see it so that you have another frame located, which is E1 prime, E2 prime, and E3 prime. So, this is your main body, and this is a subsidiary body, which we have taken it out here and considering them as two different bodies. So, basically we have taken this the free body diagram F B D, this is the free body diagram, but and here I am not showing the forces and the moments because they cancel each other and there is no need of going into this. If you uh, so for this part uh, one more problem I want to state here that uh, we can have a body like this and to this another body is attached as in the case of a telescope over a uh, main satellite. So, this is the main body and here this may be the telescope okay. and this will rotate about the hinge or it can be a satellite 
to which the solar panels have been attached. So, in that case this is the hinge point, this is the hinge point. Okay. So, this becomes the reference point for the secondary body, which in this case is the solar panel and here this is the telescope. So, this for this uh, problem I am going to upload uh, supplementary material. So, you can go through that we do not have time to uh, present all those mathematics here in this class. So, taking up this problem here. So, this becomes d by d t with respect to the E frame. d by d t with respect to the E frame and this part is pretty simple as we have done earlier. So, we break it into two portions and write like this. We are this part is this part we have written with respect to the E 1, E 2, E 3 frame. So, in that frame the inertia it is a remaining constant and th this is the corresponding term which comes from the transport theorem in mechanics. Okay. And the same way we can write for this part also. So, here this is I will. Now, but here uh, there is a difference. If we are writing so, here we have written with respect to the d frame. In this case, we have to write it with respect to the e prime frame, because e prime frame it is embedded in this. Okay. Here is your e 1 prime, e 2 prime and e 3 prime. So, it is embedded in the uh, wheel itself. Okay. So, it is rotating along with the wheel. So, therefore, as usual we break it into two portion and write like this and plus the other part. So, other part here this will be omega will cross So, this is the equation we have got and we need to expand it and just work out the solution from here. So, therefore, the h dot total this becomes i double dot and plus dot omega plus omega cross and the other term which we are writing here d by d t and with respect to the this part is with respect to the e prime frame. Okay. So, this is with respect to the E prime frame and omega will we can write as omega plus omega s times okay. and the direction in which your momentum vector is located at any time. Uh, this angular velocity for spin vector basically not momentum vector this is the spin vector the omega w we are writing as omega plus omega spin. Okay. So, this part we have broken up as omega s times E s cap. Okay. So, this is as per our usual notation we are doing this. Now, here we have to process this cautiously. And of course, the term missing is I double do. Here is the term, the outer term we have not written here, so we should supplement. So, if we break it and this is with respect to E prime frame. Okay. 
Okay. So, if we differentiate it or rather we will do it later on this is not dot here and this part also we remove it we break into two portions first. Okay. This is the first portion here i double dot this is the inertia diodic times this omega and plus omega. Now, we are considering this whole equation. So, we have to break into two portions as we are doing this here in this place. So, uh, the third part we have uh, not written here, okay, third part also we should write here in this place itself. So, I will rub it out and write here this third part. And the uh, sorry, uh, this is the uh, second part of this. So, following the same line of action as we have done for this part. So, we have omega will cross i double bar this is w dot. So, this is your angular momentum vector and as usual what we have done that in this wheel your E prime frame is embedded okay. and here is your the inertial reference frame E. So, with respect to this, this is rotating at omega w. Okay. So, for that part because we are breaking here, we have already done the breaking part here in this place. So, this is fine. So, this we are then this part this part we have expanded. So, this part we have expanded here in this place and this part is there. Okay. So, we will take care of uh, this part in the next step and write here in the next line this plus d y d t e prime y double bar w dot Now, in the body frame as usual as you know that only this part will change. So, this part we are writing as omega dot ok. So, one thing we will do here that uh, in this frame like uh, while we are discussing this one. So, this one is your E 1 prime, E 2 prime and E 3 prime. So, if you look here in this frame, so your because this is attached to this wheel itself. Okay. So, in this frame your uh, inertia is not changing and therefore, this has been taken out and rest this part we are writing as dot. Now, we have to process this part. So, for this part again because this is with respect to the E frame, but there is a difference that difference I am going to tell you what does this mean here. This is written here with respect to the E prime. Okay. So, once we differentiate this part, so we have there are one term here there are three terms here this is the first term, this is the second term and this is the third term. So, we need to take care of all these terms here. So, again in your E prime frame I w is not changing. So, therefore, this will simply come out okay. and then dot you have to differentiate this. Okay. 
now this differentiation this was written with respect to e prime frame and this is basically a vector okay your uh, omega is a velocity vector and while we write it with respect to the e prime okay that comes because of the way we have written here okay we have started from this place and we have written br broken into this portion but actually omega is a vector which is changing with respect to your e frame okay so this difference you have to make okay. so this and therefore this differentiation while we do it so we simply will write here in this format this is very important part and based on this your whole calculation is written and then omega s and then differentiation of this part e s. So, e s is a vector at any time suppose uh, we are taking this body okay. in this body at any time your omega s this is the in this frame you are defining okay, this is the omega s vector this is e 1 prime e 2 prime and e 3 prime. So, this is with respect to the body frame, okay. but it so happens that we have the this thing we are writing as omega s times e s cap, where e s cap at any instant is the vector along this direction, which is the spin direction. Okay. So, but there is a difference again, this the spin we have written if you remember we have written it for the gyros here in this case this vector itself it is a changing with respect to the body axis means this is no longer a spin, a spin vector, but because of the outer and the inner frame rotation okay, this vector is rotating okay, it is a rotating and this vector will rotate. So, one part of this is your scalar part another part is the vector part which is the unit vector. Okay. So, this unit vector it will rotate with respect to the body frame and therefore, you will write here omega cross E s cap, because this E s vector it is embedded in this frame even even prime even prime E 2 prime E 3 prime frame, which is we have written this part with respect to the body frame. Okay. So, therefore, how your body frame is rotating okay. uh, let me explain you in a separate figure let us see here i have a main body and uh, e1 e2 e3 this is the body frame and then i am telling that e1 prime e2 prime e1 prime e 2 prime and e 3 prime this is another frame okay, which rotates with respect to the body okay, and that rate we have indicated as omega s. Okay. So, this omega s we have broken here in this portion this part is your omega s. Okay, so, how your omega s at what rate it is going to change? The rate of change of this vector is at the rate omega, because your the blue frame which is here shown by this e 1 e 2 e 3 cap, okay, this is rotating at the rate omega. Okay. And in this frame there is a vector in whose direction is e s cap okay, and which is embedded in this frame your omega s is a vector you can write in terms of the components of e 1 prime e 2 prime and e 3 prime and this frame itself is rotating at this rate. Okay. So, at this this frame the red frame is rotating at the omega s times e s cap this is the angular velocity of this frame and with respect that is with respect to the e 1 e 2 and e 3 frame. So, this is rotating with respect to this frame. So, therefore, we have added omega plus omega s and written this as the angle absolute angular velocity of the wheel. So, 
in therefore for this region your es cap which is the unit vector along the omega s direction this is the es cap this will rotate at the rate omega so this part is very important if you miss this part the whole thing will be wrong okay. and this concept we are going to use for deriving a complete equation for the control moment gyros so this term we have expanded and then we have extra terms which are due to this one okay so this also we break as omega this one is pretty sim simple we don't have to worry much about this so this is omega plus omega s cross okay now we need to expand this and expand and let us look into this what the result we are going to get so uh, we have here h this total this will be i double bar dot omega plus and plus times omega dot and then the other terms omega s times omega cross es so what we will do that uh, this part we will take inside here omega s will combine with es and write it together so this way we can write this as uh, omega and then cross omega s times es cap okay so this part we are going to replace and write simply as omega s so this part we will replace here and write as omega s so this part is over i double w dot omega cross omega s and then this part we have to expand so if we expand that part so that becomes omega the first term is omega then omega and we pick up this term and here this term and this will come together so if we multiply it let us write this here in this place itself i double bar w dot omega and then this is this part is plus i w double bar dot omega s and this we have to take cross product with omega cross omega s so this part is this particular part is written here and this we have to expand we will get a total of uh, four terms okay, this is plus
ok. Now, let us check the terms. double bar omega dot s yes, we have taken i double bar omega s yes, cross ok. Okay, this term we have here and the corresponding one more term we will get ok this term and this term we will explore this two. Omega cross. we have to be careful in writing a particular part here like once we are breaking this. So, basically we have to work little carefully this part we have combined together and this we have written here as one of the term the first term we have got here this was the this term and thereafter this term we have written to the next which is present here ok. It is a difficulty in copying from the previous page okay. and then we have the next term. So, next term is i w dot omega s i w dot omega omega times omega s and then omega cross omega cross i w times omega s i w times omega s ok. So, what the care we have to take care of that we have to choose the terms like this ok. This term is appearing here. So, preference is given to this product first ok. okay. So, we are not going to take the cross product first this you are multiplying while we are writing it in a dyadic form and uh, say while we write it in the dyadic form i w double dot and then we define this as a particular one term ok and on that anything is based. So, here this term times omega s cross it appears like this not that this two will be combined together ok. So, now if uh, if you follow this procedure so this what we have written here as the bracket this should not be done rather we have to put it like this ok. So, once you do like this and then compare the terms here this is uh, i double dot w times omega and omega s omega s somewhere is here in the front i w dot. So, not this term. So, we compare now these two terms. So, this term and this term if we compare 
omega and then cross omega s and from this place if you write here omega s cross so this is a vector this is also a vector so you can see that their order has been reversed okay and therefore they cancel each other and this makes it zero so therefore these two terms we are going to get rid of and then rearrange the things so we have therefore h becomes i double bar and you you can see that omega dot is here and there is also omega dot here so we combine these terms and plus omega cross and then pick up a similar term from this place where the omega omega is involved so uh, this is present here in this place so we pick up that part so this becomes i w this is your body part okay somewhere we have not written body part only i we have written okay here we have written i b so thereafter we have missed out that part so this is your i b okay therefore this also this is i b this is i b this will keep under separate notation so that we can keep track of the things so this is i b i b okay in the next place this is i b and this is also i b so this term and this term we have combined and this term and uh, the another term which is uh, omega this place these two terms we are combining okay. so if we combine this is the i b here also this is i b okay so this way we have covered this term we have taken care of this term is over this term is over and then these two terms are cancelling out therefore they need not be considered okay so this quantity is already zero and thereafter we have taken care of this term okay what we are left with 1 2 and 3 this one this one and this one these are the three extra terms that we have to take care of okay so plus omega cross i w dot omega s plus omega times this term we have uh, copied here this term we have to copy cross okay and then lastly this term which is present here this term together we can write as j the moment of inertia of the whole body okay now we combine together i double dot es cap and plus one more term will come here so here uh, we want to put it in a format omega s cross i double bar dot omega s let us write it here and then i will explain you what i am trying to do this i am trying to explain you one very fundamental aspect of the control moment gyros without this you won't be able to do
So, once we have written here in this format okay, and this part we have separated out. So, what does this mean? Let us let me explain this. So, h dot this equal to Okay, the part which is in the bracket, this part we can write this as HS. This we can write as HS dot. Okay. So, here we write this as HS dot and plus omega cross here look this part, this is nothing but your HS. This is the angle, angle, this is the moment of inertia or moment of inertia dyadic of the wheel and this is the corresponding speed at which it is rotating with respect to the body. So, with respect to the body then we are writing this H s. Okay. So, omega cross H s. Now, uh, let us look into this part H s dot which we have written as i double dot times omega i double bar will times this is will these are all will okay. these are all will Okay, so, these are the will terms. Okay, so, this term I am going to explain you i w double dot times omega s dot times e s cap plus omega s cross Omega oh s. Now look into this term. What this is? The first term here. This is i double bar w dot, and this quantity. If you remember that once we differentiated this h one e one cap, h two e two cap, and h three e three cap. This quantity. Okay, with respect to the e frame. So, in the E frame uh, then what we are doing we are writing as d h 1 by d t times E 1 cap d h 2 by d t times E 2 cap and d h 3 by d t times E 3 cap and plus h 1 times omega cross E 1 cap plus h 2 times omega cross E 3 cap 3 times omega cross e 2 cap and e 3 cap. So, this part if you remember that this appears as h dot, okay. but this is with respect to the in that case we have done with respect to the body frame or the e frame. Okay. So, whenever we have done this exercise, so h dot we have written as h dot with respect to the body and plus omega cross h and this part we have written as i times omega dot because in that frame i does not change and this part it remains i, I omega in the matrix notation this is what we have followed. Okay. So, if you follow that notation so this part is is your moment of inertia term. Okay. And this part is nothing but your 
omega dot term. Omega dot term in the sense that this is say if omega s 1 we write it like this times e 1 cap plus e s 1 cap and omega s 2 times dot times e s 2 cap and omega s 3 dot times e s 3 cap okay. and this we write as omega s dot. Okay. So, this is appearing in the same way as I am writing here. Okay. So, for that place okay, uh, one more step I will take you to explain this, uh, because the, this one h 1 is i 1 times say the omega 1. Okay. And once you are differentiating this with respect to the body frame, so what quantity you are going to reduce this is i 1 times omega 1 dot and obviously, thereafter your e 1 term is there. So, that e 1 term here what we have written. So, this e 1 term we are keeping it here and finally, the same kind of terms we are adding up e 2 cap i 3 times omega 3 dot times e 3 cap and this we are writing as h 1 dot e 1 cap plus h 2 dot e 2 cap plus h 3 dot e 3 cap and this is nothing but your we have written as h dot and that is with respect to the body frame. So, the same notation I am following here in this place. So, if we go back I hope that this is clear because I am not uh, available to interact with you uh, at this stage, but this is a straight forward and this part gives rise to simply here the omega cross the h part. So, this part is your omega dot s. So, this can be written as omega I can write it like this and this part already we have written like this. So, what we are doing this differentiation while we are trying to do we are trying to write it in this format. Okay. We have written here the h s dot for this whole thing. So, what we have done? We have broken into two portions d by d t and we are h s we are writing as i w dot omega s okay. and then just differentiating it. So, this part is written like this and uh, omega s dot and plus omega cross omega s times omega uh, i dot times So, every place we have to notice that where what we are using here we are using omega s if you look back here we have uh, while expanding in this place uh, let us say on the previous page it may be d y d t here see this is omega w we have written. So, where I am writing what it should be very much clear without this uh, going into CMG it is a difficult. Okay. So, this whole part uh, I will wind up on the next page. So, we have here h dot total this becomes equal to j double bar dot omega plus omega cross j double bar dot omega and this constitutes your satellite part along with the CMG. Okay. CMG is also there and this the main body is also there and this is the wheel. So, that is also present. So, those two things are combined together and the other part we are writing as h s dot plus omega
um, this part we have combined here. So, other part uh, omega times h s. Okay, so, this is omega times h s. So, this part was important where now here also ponder over this point. Okay. While we write like this, okay, so what does this mean? This is the whole satellite I have taken. Okay. So, and here this omega is present. Okay. That means, this satellite is rotating, okay. this is say the uh, this is my satellite and there is the wheel which I am just showing by a circle. Okay. This is your body frame E 1, E 2 and E 3. So, the combined moment of inertia, okay. this has been taken care here in this place, but it so happens that your combined moment of inertia that gets affected because of the orientation of the this wheel. This wheel will be rotating like this, sometimes it will become like this. Okay. So, you can see that the moment of inertia along the body axis then it will not remain the same, its moment of inertia along this direction is different and while in these two directions it is a same. Okay. So, if it is a wheel, so you know that this is m r square divided by 4, m r square divided by 4 and this is m r square divided by 2. If it is a ring, then this quantity becomes m r square. Okay. So, for that reason you have already taken care of the wheel along with the satellite and this whole system is rotating at the rate of omega. Now, with respect to this, this, this system wheel is rotating at omega s. Okay. So, that I have to take care of. Okay. So, that omega s appears as. So, if you multiply this i w dot omega s. So, this shows the angular momentum of this wheel with respect to the body axis or in the body axis. Okay because this is with respect to the body axis which is E 1, E 2 and E 3 and therefore, if you write this as H s. Okay, so, rate of change of H s how we are going to write. So, obviously, we have the d one term will appear like this and another term we have to write is omega cross H s. Because your will is embedded in this frame. So, consider that this whole will is replaced by a h vector. Okay. So, this is your E 1, E 2 and E 3 vector and this whole thing has been replaced by this h vector. Okay. So, this h vector rotates at the angular velocity omega, this, this is rotating at angular velocity omega. So, this is omega cross h s. Beside this in its own frame h is also this h s is also changing okay, which is taken care here in this place. Okay. And this we have already done. So, if you remember that we wrote for the h as h of the whole satellite including the wheel. So, uh, this is w plus b first we have written and the one part we have written only for the wheel which is rotating with respect to the body and then we just differentiated it with respect to time. So, this part we have written as d by d t. So, directly I can write here uh, if the total moment of inertia we write at j. So, this part you are writing as j times omega dot and this appears as omega cross h which is h w plus b which is nothing but here in this case j double j double bar j double bar dot omega. So, this part is taken care of here and the other part which you differentiate. So, that part you have to write separately. So, that part we wrote as just as omega w dot. Okay. So, in the gyro state this is what you have done. Okay. This is will this is h w will. Okay. 
Okay, so, so this is the whole uh, purpose of discussing this. Of course, little it uh, looks haphazard, but uh, we will do the uh, this derivation completely um, in the um, next session. So, we will stop here and then continue uh, with the control movement gyros deriving its complete equation in the next session. Thank you very much.